Um, good evening, everybody. Hello, guys. Uh, welcome to one of the first live The Lookout podcast with a lot of amazing players from the Benelux area in Europe and the Lookout team from uh, Croatia. So I'm not going to be uh, having a long introduction. I really just want to leave the space to you guys to, to introduce each other. And then we're going we're gonna to kick it off uh, this amazing podcast uh, to discuss six, seven topics around uh, what, what has been happening in, in 2019 so far and what do we see in, in the future. So who do we have here? Well, uh, you have me. Uh, it's Ivan from the Lookout. I was uh, on national here on the European Championship. I was the 33rd place, uh, the bubble number. Uh, next to me, we have Matja. Hi, I'm Matja, also from Zagreb, uh, from the team The Lookout. Uh, I'm at the moment uh, trying to push a lot of uh, new uh, organized play tournaments uh, in our local Zagreb city, amongst other things. And if we continue next to the next local member, that's me. I'm Philip. I uh, haven't been as active as I liked in the last few months due to some obligations. But finally, as Amatya has said, there are a lot of uh, upcoming interesting things coming for uh, Zagreb and Croatia. So I'm looking forward to joining that as well. Thomas? All right. Hello, I'm Thomas. I'm a judge and tournament organizer at Outpost Antwerp. And, well, I try my best to get this game going in Belgium, which is not easy, but we're managing. Diego? Hi, for everyone, I'm Diego, uh, also known as the European Champion. <laughs> yet, um, yet. Playing uh, playing from the start of the, of the game, and uh, I really enjoy it. Tommy? And I'm Rene, Rene Heine, owner of TCG Collectibles, uh, also a member of Team FOE together with Diego. I'm going to be playing a bit more uh, because I've got more time now. So, yeah. Excellent. Who do we, we have someone else maybe? We have everyone else. No, that's it. Thanks, guys. Uh, it's really awesome to have uh, to have all of you here and uh, just before we start off, I mean, uh, uh, we really have to say congratulations to Diego one more time. This is uh, the Balance King now becoming the European King. Con really con congratulations for first place at the European Finals. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks. Uh, yeah, congrats about a one. Amazing stuff. Do you wanna do you wanna give us a few highlights from? Uh, I also thank you for the interview you already did did with us, but do you wanna give us your uh, your impression of how it is to be the champion and also so we can also start to getting into a bit how how we all part of us who went to the finals how we felt about it what did we uh, what did we what experience did we bring home yeah, sure no problem um yeah first of all it it's still unreal for me because um i've been playing since the start of the game and i've been doing really well at our locals but for some reason, I just couldn't do well at, at really big tournaments. Um, yeah, so the, the championship I went into just to have some fun, played my favorite deck, uh, thought I had a decent chance to make top cut. <laughs> and regarding round six, when I was six and oh, I had, uh, yeah, I had some thoughts about getting top 16 and maybe going further. Uh, but yeah, I had a really solid, uh, really solid deck choice. Um, good matchups overall, which is really important in this matter. So I couldn't complain about that. And uh, yeah, I had lots of lots of uh, amazing opponents who yeah you know, all played uh, played really well. Amazing stuff. How do you guys? Uh, how do you guys feel about the finals as well? Uh, I know uh, Thomas, you were there as well, and uh, Tommy. 
I mean, the location was quite good in my opinion. It was open. It was there was enough fresh air coming in. It wasn't like it didn't feel closed in. Yeah. So a bit more food choices. Mm -hmm. Sure. I see. But other than that, pretty decent, I think. Or no complaints, really. Yeah, I gotta say this is this is Andrea. I gotta really say for myself as well. It's it was really an amazing experience. How well organized, uh, a bit of uh, a bit of late communication stuff. But uh, but in any way, when we got there, I mean nine rounds. We all really really took it. I think super super well uh, to play nine rounds on the on the on the first day. We were out of the event at ten o'clock, but uh, I think everybody was super happy. And uh, there were also side events the next day. So I think amazingly organized as well. So. Yeah. Even yeah, how 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 do you feel about it? Yeah, I feel I feel actually amazing about it because I didn't have any I didn't I didn't think about anything else uh, in the I mean I didn't know how it will look out, will look like but in the end uh, the organization was awesome the the venue was really uh, carefully thought out of I like the venue uh, the thing about the food yeah that that's a problem for sure but I don't know. Uh, living off coffee and croissants was kind of a good deal instead of not having anything. And regarding the thing that you said about uh, being done at 10 p.m., I think everybody was happy with the event and with every performance, but only the people in the Pizza Hut were not happy when they saw a lot of us just uh, stumbling on onto the venue. <laughs> their, their faces, yeah. their faces uh, asking you, where do you, where do you, where do these people come from? What do they want? Yeah. They probably want to eat. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the, the only If I remember correctly, even we were the ones who were the last guests in the restaurant that evening. We were the last ones yeah, they let in. Yeah, we, we were the last ones and... Uh, we even uh, cheated our way into into it, so <laughs> yeah. we got to win from that. We got to eat. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But regarding the regarding Diego's statements about matchups, th that's really that's really important. I mean, it, I don't think I would have my place if I played nine rounds against Broly exclusively. So uh, a lot of these factors actually contribute to your placement in the end. Uh, my my sole goal was to actually be in the top 50, no matter what. And even, I don't know, uh, I didn't even believe I could be in the top 16. I was just aiming for the top 50 to prove myself, to prove to myself that I could be better. And uh, I thought to myself that I can be in the top 16 uh, only after the eighth round. Mm. So the ninth round was actually the, the only point where I thought that I could be that high. So, mm. uh, Diego, congratulations on your endeavor. And uh, I hope you uh, place well in the, in the Atomium. Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope so to get some information first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I just hope they don't give it like two weeks before because people have to play test or something. It has to be at least a month or but it's a couple of days. Yeah, yeah the, the, the announcement should come next week. I mean, I, I hope it will. Then again. Uh, I think the the yeah, problem, I don't want to call it a problem, but... Uh, the Italians are way behind. They have uh, don't have much cards from the first few sets. So yeah, we're probably going to play a whole different matter than we used to. But if we know it, you can play tests, maybe arrange some cards that we need to because you need to build other decks. But I think we need to have the information as soon as possible. I, I know everyone's waiting yeah. on it. Yeah, but what do you think there will be? would be illegal because the Italians don't have the former sets. Then again, they have crucial cards that are used now. The problem is that uh, we, we already talked about it. Um, if they do that, the Italians have a huge uh, benefit of playing their meta because they know what the meta is like, um, what, which decks are probably the best in their meta. Uh, other problem is if they are going to play uh, our meta, they need to have the cards. So how are they going to fix the cards for them if they mm. even have those in the in their language? So it will be strange. I think I, they I can also them. choose to go the way that Yu-Gi-Oh went for Worlds, and that's basically you submit your deck list to the TO, and they get you the cards in in the needed language. That would be awesome. 
Yeah, that, that, that would be, be awesome. really, really awesome. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe a set five onwards meta. I don't know. That that could work. I just hope that they no, just fix it? this and just release all the stuff on the same date and let everyone in Europe play together because it's strange. I'm the European champion while we also have a French champion, Italian champion. That's just strange. You also can't. Can yeah. You also can't explain it to other people. French and Italian is Uber as well. Yeah, that's true, but... <laughs> I'll, um, Bondi, I'll, yeah. jump I'll jump in. I have a feeling that this was just a, a, sh like a quick fix idea for 2019. I'm, I'm really just, just speculating. Mm -hmm. But I think they might have uh, some more plans for next year. Maybe uh, if, if the community is uh, advocating enough for it, um, they'll, they'll think of something else. Because yes, this is, this is a bit weird. We have three champions and okay, we're going to get one. But still, we have three different uh, communities in uh, Europe. Uh, so it's, it's really not... A, and of course, with, with different numbers of, of, of players, the French finals had uh, more than 400 players. The Italian finals had more than 150 players, and uh, well, the UK finals are around 300. Yeah, I just exactly. think it becomes hindered when uh, the growth of the game itself, because yeah. now it's stated that France is a community itself, Italy is one, and then, quote unquote, the rest of Europe is, which is weird. Yeah. It would also be nice if they put everything together. Imagine if we had around 500 or 600 people at an event. Mm -hmm. no, because... I would really like that. This because... would be great. Still, I mean... yeah. It, it, in this way, it, to me, it occurs that um, we don't get much players than we we already having at this moment. That's just my, my feeling regarding... Mm. And I think it would, also, but... it would also open the possibility for people to travel to be because we are very very close in europe to each other we have so many good connections uh, either with planes trains buses name it you know so i think uh, uh the tournaments that we had in europe this year would have been more visited than uh, the uh, if, if we were all allowed to play with the same cards exactly i, mean, I think they on. should take uh sorry i think they should take a a page off of the book of everybody else for example if you look at magic if you look at Yu-Gi-Oh, if you look at pokemon they have no regions when it mm -hmm. comes to europe mm -hmm. i think that is the best i mean uh, if you look at dbs in the states especially when you've uh, checked the pro play games updated uh, events they've said they've made a post in where if you've topped Euros, you automatically have an invite for their event in January, mm -hmm. which makes it worthwhile for, for example, people who have top uh, 32, I think, or 16. Yeah, 32. Yeah. yeah, to go to that event, their uh, statement is, if you top 32 at Dragon Ball Nats 2019 USA or Europe or Australia, PPG is going to automatically give you an invite. We want the best of the best. So if you top 32 Nats, just message PPG event management and we will make sure to add you on the list. Yeah, it welcomes, um, for instance, I know that two of Team FOE are going across at least. I mean, going forward, something really needs to change about this whole region lock yeah. with the language barrier. The community is already divided by itself, and then now by language. Yeah, yeah of course, by language. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I, I, saw, I saw some comments about it. And then they say that uh, people don't know what the cards actually mean. Uh, we can talk about the general fan base that maybe don't know how to speak the other language, or maybe the French. Uh, don't know English. I don't know. Let's generalize it for, for a couple of things. But I believe that if you're a committed player and that if you know your cards, you should actually know them by heart. I don't know if it's your stand, standing, but whenever I see a card, I automatically know what it means. 
I don't yeah. know if it's only my thing. I, it shouldn't be. I don't know. But if I see Agree. a really meta relevant card and that's basically some somewhere in, and someone plays it, you should know what it means. Uh, a language barrier should not be an excuse for not playing the other language. Mm-hmm. If I check it again, if, if you again check it to, for example, one of the other games, um, I I can only speak for Yu-Gi-Oh, which is where my experience lies, is if you use an English card, it's fine. If you use a foreign card, it's fine, as well as long as it's TCG, not OCG. But if you want to use a German of, uh, card, you do have to have a translation on you for said card. And that basically solves all the problems, right? Yeah. You, if, if you don't understand it, just, oh, here, here's the list. Read it quickly, you go on with the game. You don't really lose much time with it. I do think, however, yeah, with I... Dragon Ball currently, the price of the French cards is going to be an issue as well. They're much cheaper, right? If I'm They're not mistaken. loads cheaper. Broly Secret yeah, is on can... euros. <laughs> Victory Strike is on euros. Like... Less yeah, than fifty percent of the strike. yeah. The Victory Strike is less than fifty percent of the value of an English one. But yeah. that that's going to change if we can all play those cards. I think. Correct. I think that'll settle. I think it's going to be an initial bite in the ass of of uh, vendors like, for example, me. But I'll gladly take that loss uh, with the five victory strikes we have now if it means having a bigger customer base. And In the end, connecting everything will benefit us all, not I'll only play gladly, wise. Yeah. And yes. I gladly have a, a massive community uh, that uses either foreign or English cards. It's all good to me. The more, the merrier just need to fix something it's not only the language barrier but it's also bigger events for europe because other than the prelims which i'm not a big fan of i would like to have some regionals or something like that mm-hmm. that would be really awesome 100 percent accurate but, yeah i completely agree and uh, but i what what i what i saw or um, what we ha- what we are able to see now on the on the main page at least for the west is that is it's not something that I'm really fond of uh, in terms of pricing and in terms of tournaments for uh, for the, or at least the, this transition period into 2020. So hopefully they will announce some more uh, more good stuff, more than what is already announced, because it doesn't look as as interesting so far. At least my, my, what my, do you my, think is just too standard or what? Yeah, yeah, I think it's the continuation of, of what 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 we had so far and. I think until until we see more concrete, uh, like a concrete roadmap um, uh, for 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 2020, like for basically the, the plan for at least half a year, we would not know what's what's happening. Uh, the community will not uh, might not engage with the game so much. We'll see. And the big the biggest issue is that every announcement is is regarding uh, United States, yeah. and uh, it's never for Europe um, for some reason. Uh, we always have to wait, and um, biggest uh, example was celebrations last year. I understand that we are not on the same level as the United States, so we're not getting the same support. But we were paying literally for our celebrations yeah. to win a play mat, while in the United States, people were free to enter events and go home with lots and lots of stuff. Hmm. Yep. That, however, is up to the TOs. If you can prove you have enough stock remaining, you don't have to. At yep, least that, that is, is that with is true. that is with uh, Asmodee the Netherlands. Again, I can only speak about the companies I work with right now. And for example, for the World Martial Arts, we already had quite a bit of stock, and we only had to fill the booster boxes that we were lacking. Uh, we also here in Zagreb, our, our distributor is, uh, if I remember correctly, Blackfire. So uh, 
we have in stock uh, a lot of uh, the old decks and for the constructed formats there and the structured decks events in December and January uh, they do not have to they do not have to buy buy stuff they they already correct have. Blackfire is a part of Asmodee and Influence and they all report to Asmodee the UK and Asmodee UK is verified via email as well that people do not have to buy if they have current stock We lost you, Tommy. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, the events? I mean, the frequency of the events that they gave us uh, this time uh, for December, for January, for February, and uh, a lot of other things. So the new Dropbox event is already in place. Uh, we could uh, actually, you know, apply for it. The pre-release set is already there. Uh, do you think they will have to, I don't know, uh, make some free space, free room for other events? Uh, for the regional qualifications or anything like that they uh, they have to do in the beginning of the year for Europe. They didn't. I think exactly. you've got a big issue. Sorry, Diego, I'll let you talk in a minute. I think they've got a big issue because we're tournament organizers as well. If you look at the frequency of the tournaments that are being hosted right now versus the prizing that's being given away and the possibility of a TO giving prizing um, that's additional to it. It's very difficult to have that on a weekly basis because mm -hmm. we have to pay for tournament support, which is weird, in my yep. opinion. Second to that yeah, is that <laughs> exactly what Diego said. If you compare the celebration events from the US to EU, the fact that we were given, um, I think, a third or even less than that uh, prize wise is just insane and we actually had to charge people because we had to purchase the product itself as well where if i look at for example how aig did it and how ppg did it because i'm on, I'm on a very good basis with george i know how much bandai sponsors them and for europe I've said this uh, numerous times, and I'll keep saying this, even though I am a mad fan about card market joining the game, about tournament center, hosting events. It is, to me, still weird from a TO standpoint that the big tournaments are being held by companies who do not actively sell Dragon Ball themselves, thus not having stock, thus them not being able to give additional pricing. That to me is weird. Yeah, it's regarding the promo cards. We, Sorry, we, again? we need more promo cards, okay. actually. I don't think the promo cards itself is the issue, but if you compare any event that's being hosted in America and any event posted in Europe, the difference is being made by the TO doing it. And again, this is not to shut down anyone or to badmouth anyone because I love Bandai, I love Bandai, I love Card Market, I love Tournament Center, and I'm, I love the fact that they're jumping on the game as well. But it is still weird because PPG is a shop that sells product, so they're able to give additional pricing because they can buy additional pricing. The fact that our best of TOs being Card Market and being tournament center are not physical stores or web shops or whatever they'll not give additional pricing because they don't have that interest yeah diego uh, our problem at this moment is also we already have problems regarding local tournaments uh, at first we had a couple of shops uh, organizing local tournaments but now we only have one, in t at least in the Netherlands, there's one frequent organizer. It's the monthly clash we have. And other than that, it's it's yeah, very, very quiet on that. Uh, 
but also regarding regionals and such. If they want to organize regionals for Europe, uh, they can just call it one month, one month ahead. They they need to be yeah better with communicating. That that's not only Bandai, also Tournament Center and, and others. Because it always seems that we are getting one month ahead, and then it's uh, oh yeah, we're organizing a tournament here and here, and you can mm -hmm. go to there. That's just yeah, it's just a short notice. Yeah, I think we had a big problem with that in 2019, and uh, um, I I could only speculate that it's either because of the, the the either lack of staff or lack of well, not really sure why. We we also don't know no no the product was late. I remember I started playing um, just about when when set five was coming out. I think in Europe it was delayed uh, for like a month and a half or something, and then uh, there have been delays in the in the in the future. But uh, well, I'm not sure how is it going to be with set eight, but really really looking forward yeah, to I'm set eight. I'm actually scared about the I'm actually scared about the sneak peek because uh, we have it in two weeks, and I don't know if it, if the merch will actually come. In. Even the magnificent collection, the, the pre-orders should have been shipped few weeks ago i mean uh what 10 days ago but then again it's also rescheduled to 22nd no no the uh, magnificent collection is the 22nd of uh, november confirmed by suppliers yeah, they are yeah, currently yeah. in no. stock at the yeah, yeah no but uh for the first couple of days when i pre-ordered it it was it said 31st of october yeah, but that was Blackfire themselves giving a rough estimate because mm. Blackfire was not given a date. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, then again, the Americans already have the Magnificent Collection, so... so have you that. have a very valid point there, and that's a very good uh, bridge to something else that we're still running into, the non-shared release. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the re re release date. So, what do you? Uh, well, if if the set eight comes uh, when it's supposed to come, so end end of November, between middle of end and end of November, you guys will be going to pre-releases. There'll be there'll be stuff all around Europe to, for the stores that applied for it, of course. And uh, I want I want to go kind of seemingly into into not not kind of looking at at this. As as a as a problem, but looking at it as as an exciting thing that that's coming really because set eight will bring a lot of new stuff, and I really wanted to ask you guys what do you think what 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 were your first reactions on on the new multicolored cards? Uh, I will I will go first because I already did some research. Um, I know they are making every uh, almost every dual color card. I saw that we are on set nine. We're also getting the red blue color dual color cards. So that's pretty pretty uh, exciting. So you can mix all colors together. Um, with with the latest Arata, which I'm not a big fan of, but it's it's still very good what they did. Um, it it slows the, the the game down a lot, and that also uh, makes a lot of more decks playable. And Sat Eight has lots and lots of fun decks to play. And I must say, in testing, every deck feels at least the ability to be, to be a tier two deck, so that's that's really good. It's very well designed. Nothing uh, generically good, like uh, some super channel leader or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I, know. I found I found the set eight cards uh, really confusing <laughs> at first because the archetypes are really uh, specific. Uh, I believe that the new Kyo can card uh, Android from one, uh, but then again. She has her own gimmicks. Uh, I think we'll see. Uh, Gojira BR will stay strong, I believe, even uh, even in this set. But uh, Matya, you actually heard about a, a deck idea from what a Shannon Ramp deck that they tested in Barcelona. Uh, Shannon Ramp and Barcelona. like a super Shannon. No, no, uh, that was something I found. I'm not sure where, but it was definitely on YouTube. Uh, somebody was trying to make Super Shannon great again. By basically uh, skipping uh, the turn to uh, get the energy extra to ram into the Gojira, in, uh, into the seven drop Gojira. So you, uh, with using stuff like uh, some of the squad, uh, the the Supreme Kai, which uh, you, uh, which is uh, the the uh, which is used as the energy, 
uh, you basically get to ramp uh, objections and recess with the uh, Supreme Kai Bell cards. And at mm -hmm. one point, at most likely that's the turn three, you skip the turn to the turn four, and then you're going to get your big guns out. Uh, the main issue is that uh, of all the 50 cards in the deck, 31 were battle cards. Yeah, the guy was ambitious. It was very ambitious. It's most likely a dead end. I don't believe that even with uh, tidying spots uh, and places in the deck for the extra cards will make this happen because you're usually uh, going to uh, place battle cards into the energy area at any ideal point. Yeah, the deck doesn't make any sense, basically. Yeah, but people are still tending to use uh, the Supreme Kai's, these uh, two drops, those are West Kai's? Yes. Yeah, yeah, West Kai's. Oh, West Kai's I'm sorry, yeah. bad with names. Yeah, so people are uh, experimenting with West Kai's, so you can assemble the squad them, uh, objection uh, with them, in order to play a real energy, and then uh, throw out the big guns on the field. Much easier, let's yeah. say, but in that issue, uh, in that case, most likely the Shenron uh, leader will prevail more as as opposed to Poronga, or the Super Shenron. I do also like the fact they have the Hachiyak now. That's insane. Yeah, what's That's... the ruling on that? Uh, I mean, it says that only one battle card can actually attack uh, with the cost 7 or less, but if you play Shenron against it and you give Gogeta 7 a triple attack, can it, can it attack three times? Yeah, it can, because it's, uh, it's the card you attack with. So it still counts. As long as it's the same yeah. card, you can yeah. attack uh, multiple times indeed. So if something has dual yes. attack or triple attack, you're fine. Um, but other than that, it's just basically a leader with a Nimbus ability on it, which is really good. Mm. I don't. Yeah, regarding yeah. Shanron, I don't think Shanron will be viable anymore. We've been testing a lot, and there's actually a turn three kill deck in this set. The yellow baby, and that's really insane. The I don't think someone. The... Oh, just uh, the super baby one that um, becomes super baby two leader. I think it's a normal one from yeah, set it's, eight, it's, so uh, not the starter eight, one. Either, yeah. That's insane. It, it's minus everything with 20k, so your leader will become a minus 10 leader or minus 5 leader. And then it just puts out three attackers on turn three, like triple strikes and dual attacks or something like that. It's really crazy. Yeah, so people will actually need to compete against that. Uh, I mean, the Atomium tournament will have these cards viable. Uh, what do you think will be the countermeasures to such decks? Uh, against <laughs> Baby. Yeah. Uh, against Me? maybe it's very hard to actually counter because you need to play loads of negates like Nimbus and stuff to actually keep him from attacking. So yeah, you'll basically won't actually be able to play our game just uh, just negate his attacks. Yeah, and <laughs> the denial of hope is really good against it because uh, they need to summon a baby, a four-door baby that has barrier. And from there, there forward, they need to uh, evolve it to the baby that minus everything with 20k. Um, but if they, if you denial it, um, it isn't that easy for them to come back because the leader is an untap. Of oh, sorry, is a draw two leader. Thank God, because if it had untap two leader, it would be broken. Mm. Yeah, I think they balanced out uh, both of the babies very good. Because the starter actually goes into two life and then uh, draw two and untap two. Um, having the set leader having untap as well. Yeah, red and up, to be honest. Well, we can't hear you, Tommy. Oh, then it's my mic uh, screwing up again. Mm -hmm. Now again. What I found interesting, and in, uh, while we're talking about baby, uh, is the are the new secret rare cards, and they're very interesting abilities. Yeah, agree. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Every everybody hates the card. Uh, I actually love the Janemba players who thought that it will it will be viable in uh in the Mil Nemba. Yeah, 
and uh, just reading the comments, uh, seeing, uh, you know, the corrections of the fact that you can't play Legend. Uh, was really did, did they forget the the maximum card cost or what? <laughs> of course they did. Yeah. Uh, of yeah. course they did, yes. <laughs> yeah. I like the Vegeta more the most, I think. Uh, well, it gives you an op it gives you different options, and uh, but you can make sure that with the blue color you can ramp it, and uh, you can you, you can even play the turn faster. So uh, just jump in with it, and if it doesn't finish the job, uh, there will be other strong cards in the deck to finish the job if if this one gets negated. But it's well, it's a yeah. But for me, uh, the, the Vegeta is really easily uh, countered. You should actually play it when you're on six energy because uh, you have to have I don't know, like a desperate measure. So if you're if you're playing against anything that has yellow, a yeah. chomp, a well positioned chomp, a check can actually end your turn. Yeah, so that's true. you would have to have I don't know another edit for that. But I don't know. Uh, the main fact is that the Vegeta is blue green, so that doesn't make any sense. But then again, a lot of Vegeta <laughs> players like Vegeta, so they will buy no matter what. Should have been red yellow. It should have been red yellow. Yeah, it should be because with yes. Janine, with with the baby, you actually get get the GT out of it. So it's a strange to have it as a uh, green blue one. That'd be a tricolor. Then. Yeah, <laughs> a four color baby. A tricolor. Mm -hmm. I would like to four see a four color, color deck. I would really like to yeah. see that. Let, let, uh, yeah, let's wait for set ten. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> please no. Please no. But I think I think there's also one card that opens opens a lot of possibilities, and that's yeah. the that's the Bulma. That's the yeah. Bulma. Uh, I mean, I I have one question here, and that's for all of you guys. What do you think is is it going to be pl playable? Uh, even though Janemba is still very strong in the format, and or and the other the other thing is that uh, how the, do you draw so many cards in one turn and defend? I mean, it's just it's just, it's just going to be so many blockers. I think Burley will have a like a rest fest. Regarding Bulma, the problem with Bulma is it's it's very fun to play, but my biggest issue is that you don't have a lot of beaters to to do own damage. Mm -hmm. That that's my biggest issue with it. So you're good at defending and good at stalling out the game, but if you're playing against something like Janamba, uh which love mm -hmm. uh, loves to play the long game. Uh, you you can't win that game. No, um, definitely. Yeah, uh, I don't think you can win that game. I think it's more probably someone figure will, will figure something out that also mm -hmm. has strong attackers. But I don't yeah, know. It has to have strong attackers because the Super Saiyan God Goku that comes into play, he does not have the play. The Nile of Hope can actually kill the mm -hmm. whole. Uh, if actually anyone play. commits to putting it on play with a dual attack, uh, what, double strike, triple strike, or something like that. And critical, yeah. Yeah, and he, yeah. he has critical, but he does not have the flag, but the Nile of Hope can actually open him to strike and kill him. Mm. That's the one with uh, offering as well, right? Yes. 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 So critical offering and then gets double strike and dual attack. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, one to go. It's, it's a card you can get rid of easily. Yeah, that, that's why I think the Beerus will be maybe a stronger leader for the red ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, for the other for the others, uh, Dr. Rihiro can be actually fun. It, but it's we a have fun to deck. see how, how it can stall out. Yeah, will, will it be able to stall out? Uh, no, it's very slow. Oh, yeah. Still slow. Mm. Way too slow. Uh, what, do you think about the, what do you think about the green Kaioken Goku that uh, thrives on revive cards? Uh, revive is a a fun mechanic, but don't think the Goku needed it, to be honest. Mm. So basically, what we from set eight we get baby as a new threat, yeah, May, yeah, Beerus, and Hatchak as a control. I mean, mm -hmm. we did not show the other black leader, but for now we have that. Yeah. Bears is, Bears is pretty strong uh, in testing. I've been playing a lot of Bears because I, I think it has lots of potential. Um, sure, it draws not on the Awakened side, but the fact you have removal and a free 10k combo mm -hmm. is pretty good. <clears throat> Other than that, yeah, it's difficult to see because someone can make... We didn't even uh, yeah, thought about it, like Super Shaman, for example, or something mm -hmm. like that. 
I don't think there's anything broken in it because I think Bondo is really aware, uh, not creating problems anymore. But mm -hmm. we'll see. But yeah, it's it's hard competitive because I don't see any of these decks beating the Yellow Broly at this moment. No, I think the Yellow Broly is one of the best Yellow leaders you can get. It's the best leader in the game, in my yeah. opinion. That compared with uh, combined with Mira is insane. Yeah, yeah. You always have yeah, to, still, you, still you need to have two negates, otherwise you're dead. I mean, even without Mira, the leader itself is so versatile, has mm. so much potential to raise blockers to um, the most ridiculous thing to untap an energy. I mean, if it would only uh, untap a leader. A switch to active mode back, it wouldn't be much of an issue. But if you have the chance and the option to restand an energy, uh, to use it for either the Supreme Kai, mm -hmm. either in the longer run for uh, the the cooler counter counter card. Yeah, yeah, the card they thought it would be, you know, like yeah, let's put it to three yellow energy. Nobody's gonna play it actually. Yeah, hold my beer and give me a Broly leader. Yeah. Yeah. That. But what do you guys think about, for example, if you look at the yellow Broly leader, if you were to errata that, so for example, only work on battle cards free or less, would that fix the card itself? Would that fix the issue? Uh, I don't think it would actually, no. because someone will, will find something else. Uh, maybe if uh, his ability was to restand uh, a battle card or him. Or maybe just to restand an energy. I don't know. Just to, to prevent uh, mirror shenanigans. I don't think not I, just I, any yeah. card, but some specific type of card. I I have a different opinion. I think. I mean, it it already hurts a lot to take a life from yourself below four, or or at four. Um, I don't think it. I think it really gives an opening to to the opponent to finish you if you're at three life or ended up in two life. It actually I does well, it does not. Yeah, it Probably. doesn't matter because when you take that life, you actually finish it. Problem with Broly, in my mm. opinion, is uh, it also has Zano button at this point. And Zano button, <laughs> you can't really answer Zano button at this point no. because battering is gone unless someone cools you. But it's free untap, so they just can untap uh, during their turn. Use mm. Zano button, combo apes for defense. Yep. Yeah, I true. think. The problem I have with Brody is I'm comparing it to other leaders. Other leaders don't draw on the awakened side, need to do a lot of things to draw, mm -hmm. uh, create certain situations. Brody has everything. It has untap 2, uh, free resting of blockers. Um, it uh, can restand energy battle cards. It has the ability to play bloodlust. And with a deck that draws so many cards, it always has the one of bloodlust. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really strong. And in the end, he's also uh, uh, taking his life to uh, awaken faster. Yeah. So he's a self awakener uh, by default and drawing a card next to the life yeah. that you also took. It really uh, is the pinnacle of the yellow leader. Mm -hmm. Anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think, I think for having yellow leaders like Baby and stuff like that move forward, uh, Broly needs to be taken out of the game. Uh, because it, it has way too much stuff to plus without actually having a negative on it. But that's my opinion on the Broly leader. I think well, it's a viable well, yeah, because... bad target, yeah. yeah. If you look at all the... No, no, speak, speak. Look at all the big tournaments. That That's the, the main issue I, I have with it. They uh, made sure that Shandron isn't playable at the same... Mm -hmm. playability that it had so they're trying mm -hmm. to fix that yeah. but on the other hand every big uh, net or uh, regional mm -hmm. or something like that multiple Brodies in top 16 all the same deck yeah. and I think at every final except for the ones they didn't have Broly mm -hmm. Broly made finals and yeah. also won the tournament yeah yeah, and that, that's the thing. I mean, uh, what? One Wish deck was in top 16 in the European finals. Uh, also, not many of them were in the Italian or even French ones. Uh, what? The American ha the Americans had one or two also. Mm -hmm. But every tournament had a lot of Brawlies. 
and yeah. nothing from the Broly was changed. I mean, I know that people don't like the Wish decks, they hate World Peace, or I don't know, whatever. Uh, for me, playing the World Peace deck is, it looks kind of easy, but it isn't. When you don't have the necessary pieces, you actually struggle. Yeah. And uh, a well-positioned denial of hope can end your game pretty mm. easily. Uh, and it's not my fault that a lot of people uh, like to play Zamasu, I don't know, and, and think that it's a tier zero deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, nothing from Broly was changed. Nothing. Not even one card. And they even gave him the uh, ape Bardock that yeah. just strengthens the whole thing. Well, but you and can so also say... Not... Yeah. But maybe you can also say that they hit him before. Uh, I mean, before with uh, re reducing Cold Bulbas to one and... Well, bending better than laser, they did a lot of stuff before. Yeah, but it doesn't so, uh, really matter for yeah. that Broly leader because it's way too OP, to be honest. Well, I think moving Cold Bloodless from four to one, it's a, it's a big move. That, that yeah, I think that, before, that could yeah, be, would have been a big mistake. That will be, uh, yeah, it will be impossible to play against. I think that's when. Mm -hmm. See uh, Broly being super super powerful. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it is now, but not as much as with four called Bloodlust. I don't think the problem is whether or not they changed anything with Bloodlust. I think it's more the issue that the card itself, as Diego said as well. If you compare <clears throat> the Yellow Broly leader to any other leader out there, the things that the Yellow Broly leader can do on, for example, the Unawakened side, but also on the Awakened side. It is just ridiculous. Mm. Mm. And it's it's yeah. really difficult to play against. Of course. Yeah. That's that's my I mean, biggest what? issue. Uh, yeah. I mean what do you have? The blue variation of, of Broly could be Herodogarn the drawing and tapping and I don't know what, but I, then again on his awakened side he does not do with miracles like Broly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what what do we have for green? We have the Clash Coup and for the red what? Pan, but Pan is not even close to that kind of power. Uh, Broly is really, really strong, no matter what. And uh, I don't know if they ban it or don't ban it. It's it's late because uh, whatever they do, your tournament in Brussels is coming up. They won't do anything to it then. I don't think they will touch it because it's a Broly. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe set eight will come. Be I don't know. Will bring something. Set nine will probably bring a reprint of SS3 Goku or something. Mm -hmm. When they said yeah. they will put the leaders, whatever they were gonna do. And I'm actually looking forward to set nine. Uh, just because of the Gokus, just because of the Jirens, the Cells, or everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. Set 9 will be a, a hype train just because of Cell, who is making this big comeback. Yeah. And I hope he will be yeah. the green, and he will be, then again, played in Broly because he's yellow. Mm. Uh, that, that's, that's the biggest issue, because I played lots and lots of Brolys at Euros. I think I've played four, <laughs> and in all honesty... I wasn't attacking, I was only defending, defending, mm -hmm. uh, trying to bait them to make a mistake that they go to uh, way too, uh, uh, too fast, to, too early life, to two life or three life, or something like that. But it's it's so annoying to play against because every time you attack, you're afraid to get an, an, another Abe on board. Mm -hmm. Not attacking, they are going to come in your turn. Uh, it's, it's really difficult. And the biggest issue is that you can create multiple sets as long as that leader stays the strongest leader everyone keeps playing it if they win, if they are going to tournaments and especially if they can win something there just is no downside to it mm. oh because every, as, as soon as you go to a big event everyone most likely will play the play the best deck at least the most people will do and as long as that leader stays this strong, yeah, I don't. You, it, it takes away the playability of new cards. Yeah, true. It's the same with because, uh, with SS3 Goku and uh, Mega Frieza as well. It's all that over again. Yeah. All right. Um. Maybe that actually brings it up to a nice, to a nice kind of ending of of the discussion about set eight. I mean, we we also touched a bit upon uh, set nine. We also we also discussed the 
the, new, the, the various new tournaments coming up, uh, very, various kind of tournaments. I know we have a small scene in, in Zagreb, Croatia, but uh, I think the new tournaments will, will, will connect the communities and uh, there'll be more players in, in, uh, in all the countries in uh, Europe. We're going to be monitoring it very, very closely because we're going to be doing a, a state of play uh, quarter 2019, quarter four 2019 report. Uh, just to see, just to map, kind of make a difference between what was happening in spring and how the communities look like right now. And also we'll uh, shed some more light on, on the actual Euro European meta uh, by, uh, by having different reports from different locals and kind of trying to see how, what are the actually the most played leaders uh, across Europe to see who is who is getting more spicier, which countries have uh, decks that uh, we would not even think about and because we don't know at the moment. There are not really that many YouTube channels. There are not really that, that many uh, channels at all where you can um, where you can put your stuff there. But uh, I want to invite people that uh, we can we can publish stuff on, on the lookout as well. And I would really invite you to if you want, if you have uh, your, your, your idea, if you have a video you want to publish, if you have something that you think the community should see, let us know. Uh, and um, we are we are very, very open, very, very happy about uh, uh, being sort of a platform that can cover multiple countries. And we're very happy to have this discussion right now with the, mm -hmm. with the, with the guys from the, from the Benelux, so one of the best communities in Europe, I have to say. This is really, really amazing. We, we, we had a tournament in Antwerp today. Ten, I think, ten people showed up. Am I, am I right, Thomas? Twelve. 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 Sorry. I'm, yeah, missed two. Twelve people showed up, and uh, we had a really nice. Uh, yeah, three rounds. Uh, it is just for a random local, though. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's still good. That's exactly. still good. Not many locals have that amount of players anymore. So that's a very good to have. No, they do not. We had what five people yesterday. Yeah. The magical number five, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know the five musketeers and uh, <laughs> yeah. the five. Yeah, yeah. You know the number five, the yeah. five apostles, and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah ho hopefully, with these new uh, ev uh, events like the team battles, like the contracted, like the pre-releases that we did not have until now. Uh, yeah. Hopefully the players, yeah. The, hopefully the players that uh, played before and stopped at some point uh, might return. Maybe we get uh, the chance to attract new people now mm -hmm. that uh, the tournaments and uh, that the events are somewhat sanctioned and also sponsored in a way by uh, by Bandai. Yeah, and mm -hmm. leading into the worlds. Yeah, yeah. I think worlds yeah, is a very yeah. good step. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just hope there will be, I don't know, uh, the open format of these, uh, this year's finals is uh, is kind of healthy, I don't know, because everybody can show up if they want. You have uh, you have a lot of ambitious players, a lot of great players, but uh, maybe the regionals will lock any player who isn't grinding enough out of the competition. So even, uh, even a major event will have a strong competition. It's a good filter. That's that from me. <laughs> good, good. Anyone uh, has any kind of last shout outs, last comments? I think we are coming up to it on an hour. So I think one hour is, I think, pretty much to listen to for whoever will be listening this after the live. We're yeah, going to put it thank online. Thank you, and, whoever uh, you are, for listening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this will be still on the channels uh, VOD, so there's no subscription behind it, so everybody can watch it uh, when they need to. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Tommy. Thank no you, problem. guys. No uh, yeah, it was really amazing around. to do this. Uh, I mean, I, I think we should we should do this more often. Let's try every more topics. I think take, yeah, let's do. try to to do this towards bigger events as well. So we can discuss yeah. what's coming up as well. Yeah, absolutely. When when there are bigger topics and bigger events coming up, we we, sh we should do these things. And I think in general, the game, uh, in my opinion, needs a lot more promotion in, in a sense. But also, our own community activities uh, have to be uh, hi highlighted more as well. Yeah. And we are very 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 happy to help uh, to help in that. And uh, 
we'll keep doing our best and uh, thank you guys for joining. No problem, man. No problem. Hey, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks See you. See you guys. Yeah. Yeah. See you. Good luck. Bye. Good luck. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.